Hi. <laughs> I'm Jamie, welcome to my channel. So this is the place for businesses, coaches, and creators who want to build their rapport while building their bank account, all through live events. So if you have a teachable skill, if you have a course, or you have a proven system, whatever that may be, this is the place for you to take that business to the next level. Let's get started. Okay, so today's topic is how do you choose a location? I got you, boo. First tip is where like, do your ideal clients hang out? Obviously, if your main clients are like centered around where you physically live, it might be best to host the first one wherever you live. If you're kind of like sprinkled and scattered all around, where do your ideal clients want to go? Because ultimately, if they're dropping um, major cash on a high ticket event, they're probably going to want to do a little bit exploring and sightseeing or tack on an extra day or two and turn it into more of a vacation, like a learning vacation experience. By figuring out where they want to go or where they're interested in going, then that'll help you narrow down and really hone in on like a little sprinkle or a little perk to get people into the door. Tip number two is setting the scene. So what kind of vibes do you want to bring to this conference? Because the vibes are going to drive the storyboards, they're going to drive the budget. If you're at the beach, you might be a little bit more like, you know, go with the flow. You might be a little bit more like, oh, we're on island times. But if you're in a metropolitan city, you're probably going to be a little bit more hustle and bustle, a little bit more sights, a little bit more things to do, some twinkly bright lights. Um, if you're in the mountains, you might have like a cabin cozy feel with like flannel and Ugg boots. Whatever that vibe is, you really need to decide because that will drive your location, right? So by setting the scene and setting the tone, that really will narrow down your selection to a couple of cities. Third tip is to jot three cities down. And if you're having issues narrowing it down to three, go onto the internet and start doing a little bit more research. Peak seasons versus shoulder seasons versus off seasons versus rainy seasons. So like let the weather drive your decision. Peak seasons, you're gonna have higher prices, you're gonna have lower availability, and you're going to just overall like pay more. Now off season, you're probably gonna have bad weather and you're going to pay a lot less. You're gonna have way more options. Do you want to be somewhere where things might be shut down? No. So the sweet spot in between peak and off would be shoulder. So shoulder season tends to still have good weather and the prices start to come down a little bit. If you are vibing some Mexico, then I wouldn't recommend going in July. If you're vibing some mountains, you want to make sure that people can get in and out. So just consider the weather when making a decision. Okay, another thing to consider when you're looking at cities. Is there an airport within 20 to 30 minutes from you? This is the range basically that Uber will drive. If you can't like taxi to and from, then you're probably gonna need to think about transportation. So making sure that there is an airport, like a major airport 20 to 30 minutes from where you wanna go will definitely cut down on the complexity of what you need to plan. And honestly, it makes it a little bit more tangible for your people to come because then they don't wanna have to think to get to their event. Cause I mean, some cities, like Tulum, flying to Cancun, but it's an hour drive to Tulum. I would rent a van there to pick up your clients. But if you fly into Cancun and you host in Cancun, then they can just take a taxi from the airport. The third option of when you're trying to narrow down your cities is what is there to do? Is there extracurricular activities? The reason I say this is because people need downtime. They cannot sit in a seminar or a class or like teaching and listen for six to eight hours and like not have anything to look forward to afterwards. That's really where the magic is. That's when people have an opportunity to network. That's when people have an opportunity to explore and their time to not think. And what better way to do it by like giving them another activity that doesn't make them think. Whether that's, you know, a private beach time or that's a hike time or that's yoga time or getting them out of the learning atmosphere really goes a long way and no one wants to pay a high ticket amount and not be able to do anything be so jam-packed that they can't do anything except learn because there's always an experience component to retreat that I think a lot of retreat hosts that try to plan themselves kind of forget because they 
think of I have to plan and jam pack my retreat with so much knowledge because that's how it's going to be perceived as valuable that they forget that people are humans. If COVID taught us nothing, <laughs> people crave connection and they can't stay inside or sit still for very long. So we're gonna go for a bonus round and if you're stuck between two cities, perfectly fine. You want to do additional research. You want to figure out, you know, are you wanting an Airbnb or a hotel? Both of which are fine. You want to start reaching out to them because nine times out of 10, when you start the communication and you're choosing a shoulder season and you have dates picked out, if a hotel has availability, we're gonna give you everything you asked for because they want your business. By starting the communication, there usually becomes a more clear, definitive location for your retreat. And that might sound like it's jumping the gun a little bit, but if you're torn between two places, the only other option is to see who's open. If one city's your favorite and they're already booked, then like you gotta go to city number two. So instead of like working in a linear fashion, Start the negotiation process because honestly, even if you have two hotels or three hotels that want your business, you can then start negotiating in a way to make sure you get everything that you want. All right, if you found this helpful, be sure to leave a comment below and let me know like what was the most helpful suggestion and um, what location have you chosen or thinking about choosing. Be sure to smash the like button um, hit subscribe and that little alert bell and it lets you know when the next video is about to post.